This is my life. Hi there, my name is Laverne Cox, and today I'm looking back at some moments that have shaped my career. This is Becoming Laverne Cox. I actually have no idea what this is gonna be. Okay, boom. <laughs> I love this photo. This was Halloween 1999. Around this time, I was a backup dancer for Kevin Aviance, New York City club legend. When I moved to New York, I was so into going out in the club scene. I had a shaved head, I shaved my eyebrows, I would draw them on every day and wear false eyelashes to ballet class. I was this kind of art school kid who was gender non-conforming, starting to act, and really interested in like, underground sort of performance. The summer of 94, I actually worked at Stingy Lulu's. Stingy Lulu's was this um, fantastic restaurant where a lot of Queens and gender non-conforming people, club kids worked. And then I ended up working in a coffee shop in Union Square for 10 years. I met a lot of the community that I formed in New York happened from coffee shop, happened from going out. But it took me a while to really find my people. Next slide. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I'm Candace. You wanna join my club, Hanson? Is Freddie Ramirez working today? Oh Lord. What'd that little devil do now? Law and Order SVU. That's the first Law and Order I ever booked, which was a huge deal for me. I believe it's about an athlete who was a closeted gay athlete who had killed his partner or something. I mean, the breakdown is this is a drag queen who worked at a gay gym called Bull Jays. But in 2008, people didn't know the difference between drag queens and trans women. This time was really special for me because I wouldn't have even had an agent if it weren't for Candace Kane. I booked this in 2008, and it was the year after Candace Kane made her iconic, for me iconic, debut on Dirty Sexy Money, becoming the first openly transgender mm -hmm. actor to have a recurring role on a primetime television show. When that moment happened, I was like, it's our time. I made 500 postcards that said, Laverne Cox is the answer to all your transgender acting needs. And I sent the postcard to like everyone. And I got four meetings. And one of them was with my current manager, Paul Halepo. And because I finally had an agent, I was able to be sent out for roles. 2008 was a pivotal year for me. None of that would have happened if it weren't for Candace Kane. Next slide. I'm giving the next slide. That is me with Jamie Clayton and Nina Poon, and it is a, a promo shoot that we did for Transform Me. Transform Me was a makeover show. Me and two other trans women would travel the country making over women who were not trans using what we learned to transform ourselves. The best part of Transform Me, in a way, was meeting the makeover subjects, meeting the women who I mean, this is 2009 when we shot it. None of the women had ever met a trans woman before. And so they were getting this makeover, but they were also getting to know trans women. And that, for me, that was the whole point of the show. I was like, how can we get trans people in the houses of people in middle America so that they can see us as human beings and connect with us as human beings? And what was also interesting and painful was the criticism from the trans community. There were a lot of trans folks who said that our show reinforced stereotypes about trans women. That was like the first time that I experienced like really intense critique from the trans community and that's always been the most hurtful. But that's that comes with the territory. It wasn't a perfect show, but what was really beautiful for me in terms of my spiritual development. I thought that when I was starring in my own television show, that all the pain and trauma of my childhood would melt away. And I was shooting that show and I didn't feel any better. And that's when I realized that it's an inside job. That there's nothing actually outside of me that is going to fix me. And it was really the beginning of the healing process that I'm really still in to this day. The next slide. Oh yes, me and Carmen Carrera on the Katie Couric show. When Katie 
ask Carmen Carrera, you have different private parts now. And Carmen says, I don't want to talk about that. And then I come out and Katie asks me, well, Carmen doesn't want to talk about this. What do you think? The preoccupation with transition and with surgery objectifies trans people. And then we don't get to really, really deal with the real lived experiences. The reality of, of trans people's lives is that so often we're targets of violence. For decades, I had seen trans people on TV talk shows just answering the questions, just allowing that to happen as uncomfortable as it may have been for them. But this is the first time that I was aware of that two trans people were pushing back against that narrative. Because I didn't know in 2014 how long any of this would last, right? So in 2014, I was like, we need to have this conversation and it is urgent and we need to change the narrative about how we talk with and about trans people. So for me at the time, it was an urgency that was bigger than me. She brought me back onto her show in June of that year. That was an inappropriate exchange. I want to use this as a teachable moment, not only for myself, but how do we explain sort of what is the appropriate conversation and how do we make people feel if we don't have an example of what you shouldn't do. We got to have a conversation about the lived experiences and the struggles that a lot of trans people have. 2013, me as Sophia Berset in Orange is the New Black is obviously the show that changed my life, that changed the trajectory of my career. This particular still is from the episode Lesbian Request Denied. When I got the script, I was so excited and and I thought, of course, I would play my character pre-transition. Long story short, Jodie Foster and Ginger Cohen didn't think I was butch enough to play myself pre-transition. And so they went to find actors who could do it. I told them I have a twin brother and my twin brother ended up playing my character pre-transition. I didn't book Orange is the New Black till I was 40 years old. I had studied acting extensively for, for many years and done a lot of off, off Broadway, a lot of student films, independent films, and had taken acting very seriously, but just had not had an opportunity to play something like this. The beautiful thing about it is that it changed the lives of trans people all over the world. So I met trans people who would tell me that because of that episode specifically, they were able to come out to their friends. They would say, I'm trans, and they would be, and their friends would be like, oh, you mean like Sophia and Orange is New Black? And I am so grateful that I got to be a vessel for that through Sophia Bursette. Next slide. My gosh, this is intense. <sighs> the bell host conversation for me was a dream come true. When I discovered her work as a college student at Marymount Manhattan College. It changed my life. And I came to critical consciousness around the intersectional nature of race, class, and gender. She deeply influenced how I thought. My feminism was always intersectional. Getting to sit on a stage with her in dialogue, I still don't feel worthy. Belle was so shady. <laughs> I was thinking about those shoes she's wearing um, and her hair. Belle was shady in a good way. Belle would read, but there was always love there. There was always so much love, and Belle had so much love for me. Um, she had so much love for me. And there was a moment, you know, she commented on my blonde hair and my femininity and... A femininity that many people, many feminist women feel like, oh, we've been trying to get away from that. And it's complicated. And, and in some ways, she's absolutely right. And in other ways, that, that gaze is subverted because of the nature of who I am and my story and the complexity of, of this body, particularly walking the streets of New York early in my transition, throughout my transition was about an armor. It was about survival. Maybe I can like, you know, if I'm femme enough and can get through, maybe I won't get killed today. A lot of the conversations we're having now that are intersectional feminist conversations would not happen without bell hooks. They just wouldn't, all our critiques of pop culture started with that woman. I love you, bell hooks. That was long, but it had to be. Next, next, that's me. Okay, next, the cover of Time Magazine. Lord have mercy. I knew that they would be talking to me and other trans people about this moment in, in history around trans visibility. I didn't know it would be called a tipping point. That has become very contentious and controversial in the trans community over the years. So I was in the cover of Time Magazine in that month and like I think four or five trans women were murdered that month. So I was always aware that there was just, that this visibility thing as important as it 
is and was it's not does not necessarily save lives it's not necessarily keep people from murdering us and i think there's an argument to be made that as we become more visible we've experienced more violence literally every single year more trans people are murdered than the previous year but that doesn't mean that we should go and hide and when we were on the margins we it was really easy to stigmatize us really easy to sort of dismiss us like a lot of people who maybe needs need to hear from trans people never hear from trans people right they're only getting fed propaganda about trans people and misinformation about trans people into their news feeds because of the nature of i would call say predatory algorithms and we in the face of everything that's going on now we need more allies in every sphere of society who will open the door and and be loving and see our humanity and our talent and our gifts if you just give us a chance <laughs> oh my god laverne cox in a taylor swift video what is my life so this is from you to calm down the taylor swift video produced by tadra call okay i'm obsessed with this look caesar ramirez did my hair kita moore did the makeup that's two wigs uh <laughs> I'm obsessed with the look. That was a great moment for me, and it was such a sort of queer video. I don't identify as queer, I identify as a heterosexual trans woman. I love thinking of queer as a verb. I just love, I had so much fun shooting the video. Getting to work with Taylor, and then getting to have conversations with her and hang out with her. I adore Taylor, I really adore her, and I didn't even expect to like her as much as I do. Okay. Disclosure, 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 2020. It's crazy that Disclosure came out at the height of the pandemic. Disclosure is a documentary that looks at the history of trans representation on screen. It is directed by Sam Fader. Only trans people on screen, as many trans people making the film as possible. Sam said after our first meeting, I talked about, I love the movie Yentl and how for me as a kid, Yentl connected with me so deeply because I knew that I was a girl, but everyone thought that I was a boy like Yentl and I would, fell in love with a boy and he was in love with someone else. And I told Sam that and Sam said that, that was sort of the quintessential sort of trans gaze. What is beautiful about disclosure is that is a trans gaze, a trans way of looking. And it's one of the things I'm probably most proud of. Next, inventing Anna, 2022. Oh. I mean, I played roles that were not written for a trans actor, but with Inventing Anna, it's based on a real person. When I play a character, the character becomes black. As a trans woman, does the character become trans because I'm an openly trans woman? I, I don't know the answer to that. There's no way that we, Casey is trans because she's not <laughs> in real life. So I love that Shonda Rhimes had the vision to cast me in this. And when she went to Casey, Casey said, that's a great idea. I have a lot of jobs, but acting is my first love. I turn a lot of things down because they're not where I want to be or it's something I've already done. And so I just love that I got with this character to show sides of me as an artist that people haven't seen before. I'm always grateful for that. So what is this? This is just me on Instagram. <laughs> This was the Instagram live I did with no makeup. <laughs> and I put those glasses on because I think I had puffy eyes that day. And this was the day after MJ won her Golden Globe for lead actress in a drama series. I remember the first season of Pose and seeing posters of all the sort of lead um, actresses all over, you know, sort of bus shelters in Los Angeles, in subway, in the subway in New York and on billboards. I just was just jumping out of my skin, seeing these beautiful trans women of color on posters like all, like coast to coast. I've known MJ for over a decade. She's one of my closest friends. So I've seen her in plays. I've seen her on stage. I've seen her in films. I knew the talent, but I didn't even know. When I saw Pose, I, I, she completely blew me away because she was just so good and just held that show down in such a powerful, 
commanding, incredible way. I really try not to be arrogant and try not to make things about me. <laughs> Believe it or not, I claim this moment. I really do, I claim it. I mean, she did the work. Let's not get it twisted. MJ did the work, she delivered, she deserved it. But there's so many firsts by my name because tr there was no space before I was given the opportunities I was given. And I fought for the space that I cre I've created in this industry. It was not a given that this space would be given to me. I have fought for it. And I fought for it so that, so that people like Michaela J can thrive, India Moore, Dominique Jackson, Haley Sahar, all of the actors, we, there's so many trans actors working now. When I went to New Black premiered, there were no trans actors with recurring roles on um, television shows, none. And there are, you know, more now, not enough, but there's more. And so I am really proud that with God's will, God's help, that we have been able to create a space, open a door that has allowed other people to walk through. And that is the best gift of my life, seeing young, talented people thrive. And so I'm just utterly and completely proud and happy for her. And I can't wait to see what she does next. I can't wait! <laughs>